Hi, I'm Dr. Ken Berry, family physician with almost 20 years of clinical practice. And in this short video, I wanna talk with you about something that's very important to any woman considering becoming pregnant or who is currently pregnant, and that is gestational diabetes, how to catch it very early and how to fix it. This year alone, there will be 8 million women in the United States alone who suffer from all of the potentially disastrous complications of gestational diabetes. And this video is going to help you understand how to prevent it from happening or fix it if it does happen. In this video, I'm going to explain to you in very simple terms how to catch gestational diabetes much earlier than your doctor would catch it and then you're able to begin immediately to correct it, to reverse it, to keep it from getting any worse at all. And that's gonna protect both mom and baby from the potentially disastrous outcomes that gestational diabetes can lead to. If you know a woman who's pregnant or is thinking about getting pregnant, please, please share this video with them on your social media so that they can have access to this knowledge as early as possible in their pregnancy. Gestational diabetes is one of the leading causes of dangerous outcomes in pregnancy, both for the mom, the developing fetus, and even for the child after birth when they're growing up into adolescence, teenagerhood, and adulthood. Let's go over a few of the things that it can cause during a pregnancy or after a pregnancy for mom, fetus, uh, or the baby afterwards. First of all, for the mom, it increases the mom's risk of all kinds of things. It makes her pregnancy a high risk pregnancy. And what that means is that she's gonna have to endure a lot more procedures, a lot more needle sticks, a lot more medical monitoring than if she, her pregnancy were not high risk. She is gonna have an increased risk of postpartum bleeding. She's gonna have an increased risk of a severe tear during a vaginal delivery and an increased risk of C-section if she's not able to de deliver vaginally and gestational diabetes decreases your risk of being able to deliver vaginally successfully. She's gonna have a, a greatly increased risk of preeclampsia and or pregnancy induced hypertension. She's gonna have increased risk of needing an episiotomy or getting cut by the doctor in order for the baby to have room to come out. And she's also gonna have an increased infection risk. While the baby is still inside mom, the baby is gonna be at increased risk of having high insulin levels, low blood sugar levels, and increased risk of birth defects. Right after the baby's born, there's an increased risk of jaundice, uh, again, an increased risk of hypoglycemia or very low blood sugars. The baby's gonna have to get an IV stick to fix that. There's an increased risk of macrosomia, which means a very large baby with a larger head. And that's what leads to all the, the birth complications for mom that I talked about earlier. And sadly, there's an increased risk of stillbirth for gestational diabetes moms. Now, I don't want you to freak out. I don't want you to panic. I just want you to get educated, get prepared, and fix this before it ever gets out of hand. After the child successfully recovers from a gestational diabetes birth or C-section, they are for the rest of their lives at increased risk of having obesity, type two diabetes, probably high blood pressure, and then also there can be lasting birth trauma that follows them into adulthood because they were too big to get through the birth canal properly. But the main thing for a young woman to understand is that if you're diagnosed with gestational diabetes, that means many more needles for you, many more medical procedures, many more interventions for you, but also many more needle sticks for your baby, uh, more medical testing for your baby that otherwise would not be indicated. So to sum it up in one word, gestational diabetes is bad. Bad for the mom, bad for the baby. So let's prevent it, let's reverse it, let's fix it. Pregnancy in and of itself is an anabolic process. Basically, your body has to build lots of extra body tissue in you, the mom. It has to build a placenta, it has to build amniotic fluid, it has to increase your blood supply 
by 30 to 50%. It has to build all these new tissues. And so it needs lots of good building materials, but it also needs certain hormones to put it into an anabolic state so that it can build that. And don't forget, you also have to build a baby. So pregnancy by definition is a, an insulin resistant state, but that's not bad. That's actually good because you need that insulin resistance, which means basically you're making lots of extra insulin. The average mom can make three times as much insulin during pregnancy as she did before she got pregnant. And for some of you guys who know about low carb or keto, you think, oh, that's bad. But no, if the, if the mom's diet is proper, then that's okay for her to be hyperinsulinemic. She needs that in order to build a healthy body and a healthy baby in the end. The main hormones that get adjusted in the mom that lead to this anabolic uh, hyperinsulinemic uh, state are insulin, which goes up a lot, that's okay. Also, um, placental lactogen and corticotropic releasing hormones. These and other hormones will go up and they tend to make a mom more insulin resistant. But if she's eating the proper diet, that's no big deal. But if she's eating too much of the wrong stuff, that's gonna lead to gestational diabetes. I've actually talked to three different gynecologists, obstetricians, and all three said, without a doubt, there is no special genetic state that leads to gest gestational diabetes. It's not a luck of the draw, it's not bad luck. It's just eating too many carbohydrates. That is 100% of the time what leads to gestational diabetes. One of the big dangers of having gestational diabetes is that mom can have no symptoms whatsoever. She has no idea that she is developing gestational diabetes. And the average doctor is not gonna check you for gestational diabetes until usually around 28 weeks into your pregnancy. So two thirds of the way through. Wouldn't you like to know a little sooner than that? Now there's a long list of predisposing things that will increase your risk of becoming gestational diabetic, uh, including your, your race, your age, how much you weighed when you got pregnant. But gestational diabetes is becoming so common and it is so dangerous that basically I want all pregnant women to do the following things. When you first go in for your first intake lab work, your first semester, let your doctor check all the routine lab work. All that stuff's important and you need it. But I want you to specifically ask for a hemoglobin A1C and a C peptide. These are two tests that check for your average blood sugar readings and your average insulin secretion. These two tests are gonna give you a huge heads up as to whether you are at risk for developing gestational diabetes or if you're already developing it. Another thing that these two tests are gonna help is there are women out there who get pregnant and they already have undiagnosed diabetes, either type one or type two, and they have no idea because often in young healthy people who develop type two diabetes, they don't have any symptoms. And so these two tests are gonna give you and your doctor an immediate heads up as to whether you have pre-existing diabetes that you and your doctor didn't know about, or if you're starting to develop hyperinsulinemia or prediabetes or gestational diabetes, all of which you and your doctor definitely need to know about. Like I said earlier, the average doctor checks for gestational diabetes with a two hour glucose tolerance test done at around 28 weeks into your pregnancy. But if you'll check these two tests that I'm telling you about during your first trimester, you can detect gestational diabetes that's coming your way many weeks in advance, and you can prevent all the damage that would have been done had you waited until 28 weeks. If either your C-peptide or your hemoglobin A1C are even one-tenth of a point above the normal range, I want you to ask your doctor for an order for a continuous glucose monitor. Now, what this is, is a little, it has a little sensor that goes right here. It doesn't hurt at all. It's, it's effortless, so you don't, you just put it on and forget it. And there's an app on your phone and you can actually watch your blood sugar every five minutes through the day. And it'll help you know what to eat and what to avoid. Because if you eat something and your blood sugar spikes up really high, you shouldn't eat that again. High blood sugar spikes are not necessary for growing a happy, healthy baby. In fact, it actually increases your risk of all the bad complications I talked about earlier. 
So let's say you got these two tests along with your other tests during your first trimester and you saw that your A1C was a little bit high or your C-peptide was a little bit high. And you asked your doctor and your doctor didn't want to do it at first, but you talked your doctor into getting you a continuous glucose monitor, also known as a CGM. Now you're able to watch your blood sugar very closely and anytime you eat something that causes a blood sugar spike, you'll know to avoid that food in the future. The American College of Obstetrics and Gynecology, they actually have recommendations that they give to obstetricians and family doctors who deliver babies about how to manage gestational diabetes. In this, these guidelines, they recommend that a pregnant woman with gestational diabetes eat somewhere between 175 grams of carbohydrates all the way up to 300 grams of carbohydrates a day. This is way too much. First of all, you have to understand your baby is not made of carbohydrates. Your baby is made of fats and of proteins. There's no argument with that fact. Also, all the extra body tissue that you have to build is made of fatty acids and amino acids, fats and proteins. So all you need to eat to grow a healthy body and a healthy baby during pregnancy is fats and proteins. Now, I'm not gonna deny you carbohydrates, but we're gonna talk about the safe carbohydrates for you to eat if you are on the cusp of being diagnosed with gestational diabetes, or even if you've already been diagnosed uh, and you didn't know about this information, you can immediately start to implement the following strategies to get your gestational diabetes under control. And you may be sad about giving up the Cheetos and the, and the donuts and the Pepsi, but listen to me, this is going to make your pregnancy so much easier it's gonna make it so much safer for both you and for that little baby inside you that you already love. I promise you it's gonna be worth making these changes in the long run. Many women who are diagnosed with gestational diabetes immediately give up the Cheetos and the Pepsi and the donuts and they start eating lots of whole grains and lots of fruits and lots of, of, of they, they sweet and have baked potato instead of French fries. The problem is, is their total intake of carbohydrates can remain the same. Now they're less processed and probably a little less bad, but in order to fix gestational diabetes, to reverse it, you've got to cut the carbohydrate intake the diet that I recommend for pregnant women who are at, at risk of developing gestational diabetes or who have already been diagnosed with it is to eat a diet that is full of unlimited fats and proteins. Because remember, you, both you and your baby are made of fats and proteins. You can eat as much of those as you want and to limit your carbohydrate intake to 75 total grams or less each day. This leaves lots of room for lots of leafy greens, lots of brassicas, lots of nuts and lots of berries. And so you can eat all these things and get all the magical phytonutrients that are in plants in the dark greens. You can eat the colorful berries. You can eat different kinds of nuts to get all the vitamins and minerals that the experts say are in those. And by limiting your carbohydrate intake to 75 grams total or less a day, you're gonna completely reverse your gestational diabetes. And you'll be able to see this on your continuous glucose monitor. Because when you eat a meal full of the things I'm gonna tell you about, and you avoid the things that we talk about in other videos, your blood sugar is just gonna stay in that beautiful normal range. And you may have an occasional bump up above normal, but you just won't have those dangerous spikes anymore that lead to the outcomes, the bad outcomes, the dangerous complications of gestational diabetes. Pregnant woman, women can eat all the eggs, all the meats, all the different meats, and I mean fatty cuts of meats. You can eat full fat dairy, you can eat berries, you can eat butter. All these things are good and healthy and they're full of all the nutrition that you need to build both your body tissues and a healthy baby. You, uh, you have enough room in this diet to eat lots of different kinds of healthy leafy greens. You can eat a, a different amount of nuts. You can eat berries. You can eat all these different things and you can have an occasional treat every now and then as long as you don't go over the 75 grams. Let me give you a few uh, meal ideas just so you kind of see what I'm talking about. So also you need to not eat three meals a day with three snacks. You need to eat three discrete meals a day and let that be it. Try not to do any extra snacking. If you must snack, then try to snack on something that's a, that's a low carbohydrate snack like meat skins, like bacon, like a boiled egg, like a, little, a small handful of nuts. These things are not gonna spike your blood sugar that much, but it's best to not snack at all. So what about for breakfast? Eggs and bacon, 
eggs and sausage, and then you can have a small little serving of berries at the end of your breakfast. That's a great breakfast. That's gonna give you all the building blocks you need to build a beautiful, intelligent baby without spiking your blood sugar. For lunch, you could have as many chicken legs, chicken thighs, chicken wings as you want. You could add some, some uh, broccoli or cauliflower. You could have a little handful of nuts along with that. And so in all these meals, I'm not telling you to limit the portion size of your fat and protein at all. So if you're hungry, you if you, you normally eat three eggs for breakfast, but you're hungrier, you can eat four, you can eat five, you can eat six. What I don't want you to do is eat more than just a small serving of berries because then we're into the carbohydrates again. Same thing goes for lunch. If, if you eat three chicken legs and you're still hungry, eat another chicken leg. But then all, at the end, if you have some berries, just have a small serving because we wanna keep the carbohydrate intake low. For dinner, you could have a, a big ribeye steak or some ground beef or ground lamb. You could have some uh, like a spinach cashew strawberry salad with a, a low carb dressing. That's a beautiful dinner. If you're still hungry, eat some more steak. I don't want you to be hungry. I want you to eat until you're comfortably full, but I want you to be full on low carbohydrate foods. At the end of this video, there's gonna be a playlist that pops up here or here, I can never remember. It's called Keto 101. And if you follow the dietary guidelines in, in this playlist, not only can you prevent gestational diabetes from happening, but you can also reverse existing gestational diabetes. Because when your blood sugar goes back to normal and stays there, you fix the problem, haven't you? And then also you've slashed your risk of all the disastrous complications that can come from uncontrolled GDM. But what about medications, you might ask? My doctor put me on this pill or that pill or told me to start using insulin. First of all, if you're taking a pill for gestational diabetes, please stop taking that. Go see your doctor and say, hey, I heard there's no long-term research that shows that this pill is safe for my baby. And the doctor may say something like, well, I mean, we've been using this pill for years. That's true. But again, it's also true that there is no long-term research that has ever been done that shows that glucophage or gliburide are safe for you to take during pregnancy. We know that both of these medications cross the placental blood barrier. They absolutely go straight into your baby's circulation and no one knows what the long-term outcome is of your baby being exposed to that in your womb. Uh, some doctors will put you immediately on insulin and that's actually the current guidelines is to start you on insulin immediately. Now you can do that, but the problem is, is remember high insulin is part of the reason that you have all the bad outcomes, all the potential catastrophic things from gestational diabetes. So taking more insulin will lower your blood sugar, but it's not gonna lower your risk of all the complications. So uh, go talk to your doctor if you're already on insulin for gestational diabetes and say, hey, I'd much rather just lower my carbohydrate intake and stop eating all sugars and stop eating all grains and just have a few nuts or berries or, or a, a leafy green salad as my carbs and get off this insulin. Please work with me to help me do that. Also, if you're watching this and you know any woman out there who's pregnant and has gestational diabetes, please immediately call them or email them or text them and say, hey, you're not on glucophage or gliburide, are you? Because they're very dangerous. You need to get, watch Dr. Barry's video and then go see your doctor. All right. Boys and girls, that wraps up this video. I hope this helped a lot. As always, you're welcome to share this with anyone you think it would help their health, uh, help their pregnancy, and help their baby to grow up to be a, a beautiful, intelligent, adult human one day. This is Dr. Barry. I'll see you next time.